Nearly 70% of farmers in Africa are subsistence farmers. They only grow enough food for themselves. With demand for food around the world growing rapidly, these farmers are increasingly seen as the commercial farmers of tomorrow. If they can produce extra to sell and can find a market in which to sell their crops. If the farmer gets more money, he's able to spend more money, he's able to uh, consume items which stimulates industry, which stimulates general economy. He's able to send his children to school, so you have more skilled people becoming available for work. So agriculture is sort of the backbone that, uh, if that is supported, then the entire African economy will benefit. Catherine Chibwana lives in Magombe village in southern Malawi. She has five children. In between her traditional crop of maize, she grows pigeon peas. She takes the pigeon peas to a procurement centre. It's a half hour walk. Here, she sells the produce for cash to a local center of the Export Trading Group, or ETG. The money Catherine earns goes to pay for her children's education. Her eldest daughter wants to become a nurse and the second daughter an agronomist. ETG is a leading agriculture business operating all over Africa. It buys grains, nuts and seeds from smallholder farmers such as Catherine. Processing grain is an important part of the business and this adds value to the crop before it's exported. This plant in Limby processes up to 30 tonnes per day of pigeon peas. Once packed, they're sent for export via Mozambique all over the world, including India, China and the UK. The factory employs 120 people who mainly come from the surrounding area. ETG has trained local Malawians to run the plant. So they sent me to school how to process that or how to run the machine and I was given a chance to run the plant for myself and I can say I can run the plant myself with my fellow Malawians, without the expatriates. Malawi is one of the world's poorest countries. More than 80% of the country's 16 million inhabitants live on less than $2 a day. Rapid population growth means domestic demand for affordable food is growing, and that's an opportunity for farmers. ETG runs training programs that encourage farmers to grow soya beans for local consumption. Attending today is Buana Ululo. He has a three-acre farm near Malawi's capital, Lelongwe. Here he grows maize, groundnuts and soya beans. The new techniques he learns from ETG make him a more successful farmer. 
Mwewanga unaliwoti cinema sangara chifoyoti cinema pezi andra mazogwaniya. Kuba mene ice sport ata kuti pezi andi maona kuti zonse zwenda bwino chifoyoti akundigula mbeo zanga pamtengo wa bwino. Chikwaya ye moyo wathu babanja rathu sanga chifoya ya ice sport. That's a view echoed by his wife. Kimene ninga funu kuza ninkione nokuri inuyo mtaleke mutirilizo kula soya kuri mwina mwake nenge tsali manso soya nitirilizo impitsa mwana sukuru. Eh kuku fenereza. Training is a major component of ETG's aim of turning subsistence farmers into commercial farmers who are able to produce extra food crops. In the last decade in Malawi, there has been a 60% rise in crop productivity and ETG has made a contribution to this. Today, Henry Kaunda is explaining to farmers about different crops they can grow and products like fertilizers that they can buy when they drop off their produce at the local procurement centers. As ETG, we are also trying hard that we join uh, the awareness campaign whereby we impart a lot of knowledge to farmers so that they can improve their way of practicing so that they can uh, adapt to the new technologies of agriculture in turn that they can produce more. Another component of ETG's strategy is infrastructure. It's built 39 procurement centers in Malawi and 19 warehouses to store produce, so that farmers don't have to travel long distances to sell. It's also built this processing plant in Lelongwe that turns locally grown soya beans into tasty soya pieces, which are sold all over the country. For just 20 cents, Malawians can buy a source of protein that is grown, processed and produced in their own country. We are getting this soya that we are buying from them to our processing plant, Saba Food, whereby we do add value by making texture soya, which is a lelish. And the, that product has indeed won a, become a domestic name in various houses. People do like it so much, yeah. Dar es Salaam is a major African port and also the home of ETG's headquarters. ETG doesn't just operate from Malawi, it's pan-African and operates in 30 countries in the continent as well as in India, China and the UK. In 2012, nearly 3 million metric tons of commodities were traded. The number of employees has grown from 300 to 7,000. Its growth has sparked overseas interest. CDC provided a finance facility of $32.5 million to the founders of ETG in 2012 to assist with its expansion in food processing and infrastructure. CDC decided to invest in ETG as agriculture is a crucial sector in Africa. Historically, Africa mainly exported its raw farm produce. ETG has embarked on a strategy to increase its food processing plants across Africa. And this enhances local economies through a new class of jobs being created and a higher income for processed farm produce. Many of the countries in which ETG operates, such as Malawi, are also some of the poorest in Africa. As well as being poor, Malawi is one of the most difficult countries in which to do business, as is the case with many countries in Africa. There are numerous challenges for agribusinesses such as ETG. I think our challenges have been the usual for any business in Africa. The infrastructure is extremely poor. The policies are... are at best unclear, at worst uh, ever-changing, so that, that has meant that we've had to adopt and change uh, quite a lot. 
government policies really uh, are quite uh, rigid in cases and at times it tends to uh, not favour uh, free market economies. ETG has adapted successfully in many cases. Here in Dar es Salaam, ETG runs this agro-processing and logistics park in conjunction with the Tanzanian government-owned National Development Corporation. The large 58-acre site cleans up to 400 tonnes of grains per day. The chickpeas, pigeon peas, green gram and sesame seeds are then bagged for export all over the world. The site employs up to 300 people per day. Roystock Samuel has been trained up as head of the cleaning department. I think close to around 45% of our employees are women. These women, we train them, we even make them as supervisors, you know, uh, group leaders to control and guide or even train even the new men who come into the job. And our focus is to deliver a quality product in a very fast way, but at the same time, we also have a social responsibility to employ as many people as possible because that's what I think at the end of the day will do justice for our product, our company and to the society in which we are. There are millions of farmers in Africa with the potential to grow crops for sale if only they knew what those crops were, how to grow them, and who to sell them to. ETG runs a farmer's foundation that teaches prospective suppliers just that. What did you like about it? What could you do better? What, what is your feedback? I want to hear from you. Here in a village north of Dar es Salaam, Puerva Pandya of the Farmers Foundation has come to see how a demonstration project of pigeon peas has fared. The results look promising. I'm actually quite encouraged to see that they, the way they have taken care of this demonstration site. We haven't used any hired labor. The farmers themselves took the initiative and we trained them and we even used the field extension staff from the government and they were all motivated to take care of this demo site and they want to continue this and make it a learning ground. So I'm actually quite happy about the project. Now the foundation is introducing a new crop called green gram for farmers to plant. It could be ideal for the two-month period known locally as the short rains. The key challenge that we see is the widespread lack of knowledge and skills in agronomic practices that would actually enhance the production and improve the livelihoods. Mariam Musa is a farmer who would like to learn. She's a part of the Farmers Foundation. A widow with six children to feed, she's eager to produce crops that generate an income. Our vision is to uh, integrate ourselves uh, right across the supply chain from as close to farm gate level as possible to the end consumer. So, we like to say from farm gate uh, to supermarket gate. 
we believe that smallholder farming is the way forward for Africa.